Hey, Jonathan here with Central Sound. Here we have a Corsair HS70 Pro wireless gaming headset. I'm going to show you how to replace the battery in this unit. First thing you would need is a pry tool. Here I have what's called a spudger and you insert it in between the ear cushion and the ear cup and you pry upward and it should unsnap. So there's little plastic clips that hold these ear cushions in place. Not very hard to remove. Once it unsnaps, you can remove that ear cushion and set it to the side. All along the speaker housing, you can see little plastic tabs. Those are what hold the ear pad in place. So when you install it, you will snap them back on. The next step would be to remove all these screws along the speaker housing. You can use a Phillips screwdriver, a small one. Here I have a electronic screwdriver. Once all the screws are removed, you can remove the speaker housing. Be very careful. There are small wires in there. You do not want to cut them or separate them in any form or fashion. So keep the speaker housing close to the ear cup piece. And make sure you don't lose those little screws there because you're definitely going to need those to reinstall the speaker housing. As you can see here, there's the battery. Now you can see here there is a yoke mount which attaches to the ear cups. Um, just make sure those stay together with the ear cup. You do not need to remove that. So just kind of keep all the components together. You can untape the wire that's on the battery to loosen it. And then once you do that, you can unplug the connector piece from this control board here. Once it's unplugged, then you can cut the small little pieces of adhesive on the side if your battery has that on there. Um, it comes off really easily, so I'm just using this pry tool here and just pushing on it and then it separates. And then once it's separated, then you can use something to pry the battery up because there is an adhesive on the bottom to hold it in place. So I'm using what's called a spudger and you can insert on the bottom and pry upward and it should come loose. Once it's loosened, you could remove it with your fingers. Be careful not to bend the battery too much. You don't want to puncture it. So this is a 3.7 volt 1050 maw. Our replacement battery is a 1500 maw 3.7 volt. So definitely an upgrade will give you more use time. It will take a little longer to charge, but it will definitely give you some more play time when it comes to having to recharge again. So in this specific scenario, we're going to have to reverse the polarity on the connector. As you can see, this is the original battery on the right compared to our battery on the left. The wire positions are different. So we're going to have to change or swap out the black and red wire on our new battery connector. So we're going to have to make sure the polarity is correct. Very simple process, not hard, no special tools. Um, you're going to have to uh, pull up on these plastic little tab pieces in there and then you can remove the wires from the connector piece. So. In this case, I am going to use a small pointy tool here, it's plastic, and you insert it under those tabs and pry them upwards. So here is my tool, and you want to insert it underneath those tabs, and then pry upward just a little bit. And then once those tabs are pulled up, you should be able to remove the wire. These tabs are the locking mechanisms that lock the wire in the connector. As you can see, there's a small connector piece at the end of the wires. You most certainly don't want to ruin that because you're going to need those at the end. Uh, so pull up that tab just like this. And in this demonstration, I'm removing the connector completely. Not necessary really for this case, but I'm doing it anyway as a demonstration. So you just continue to work at it and pull up each individual tab and then the wires will slide out fairly simply. If they do not come out easily, then you may have to pull up the tab a little more to get it loose. Do not touch the black and red wires. Make sure that the wires do not touch after you've removed them from the connector piece. 
So you want to make sure they're separated and set that aside. Very important, do not let them touch. So here is the original connector piece on the original battery. And here we're going to reposition it. So all the way to the right was the black wire. So we're going to insert that in there. Then in the middle will be the white wire. And then all the way to the left will be the red wire. Once all wires are in the connector all the way, you would want to clamp down on these tabs and lock the wires in place. So here I have a small type of tweezer tool that you can use and uh, you just want to apply pressure and on those tabs and lock those wires in place. Give the connector also a, a gentle tug to make sure nothing comes loose, just to make sure it's in there. So here the black wire came out a little bit. I put it back in, pushed on the tab, and now it's in there tightly. So give it a little tug, make sure it's secure. Then you can plug it back in. So now you can plug the connector back into the control power board here. You want to make sure that those plastic tabs are facing upwards. So make sure it's plugged in all the way. You can see that's plugged in there. And once it is, then you can uh, plug it in, plug the charging cable in to make sure that you're getting power through the unit and that the battery is charging. So here there's an LED indicator showing that power is going through the unit and the battery is plugged in. So everything should be good to go. I'm going to unplug that connector and that charging cable, put that aside. Uh, the battery is a slightly larger, so what I'm going to have to do is make a small modification here. There's these plastic tabs that kind of hold it in place. I'm going to just break off these two right here. I'm using my fingers. They break off pretty easily, but if you don't want to use your fingers, you can use pliers. And as you could see, they came off pretty clean. So next step would be to apply some adhesive onto the battery to hold it in place. Here I have T8000 which is a pretty good adhesive, but if all you have is super glue or something, you can use that. Just put a few drops on there of super glue if that's all you got. So once you got the adhesive on there, uh, you can position it back where it was and then let it set. So you want to let the adhesive cure depending on what type you're using. And once it is cured and set, um, then you can work on assembling the unit back. So first you want to uh, hide these wires here, any excess wires. There's a small little spot here on this unit that I can tuck them into. So I'm going to tuck them into there with my thumbs. And once those are tucked in and out of the way, we can work on uh, putting together the speaker housing and the ear cup unit. So first of all, you want to make sure that you align the speaker housing first to this yoke mount, which is the piece that extends and holds the ear cups on. So you want to make sure you line that up properly and then you can put the ear cup piece on there. Make sure you don't pinch these little wires. You want to tuck them in there. Make sure they're out of the way. And then once you do place these two pieces together, um, you want to make sure that they are flush. So look all the way around. Make sure that there's no gaps here you can see that everything is in place and once it is we can work on putting those screws back in so make sure you put those screws in a safe place and once the screws are all installed you can put the ear cup back in you want to line it up properly there's a little seam that goes directly on the bottom and once it's lined up 
uh, they just snap right in. So very easy. We also have replacement ear pads for this model. And we also have cooling gel, premium extra large ear pads. So if you want to upgrade your ear pads and your comfort, I highly suggest those to go along with a new battery if, if you want. So thank you for watching at centralsound.co. And please like and subscribe this to our channel if you found this video helpful. And if you do make an order from us, we do appreciate your small business support. So here I'm just going to make a quick check just to make sure that everything is working. So I'm going to plug in the charger cable. The LED is on, so I'm just going to let that charge overnight. You definitely want to let it charge fully before you use it again after installing a new battery. You may have to reset it as well. So you can purchase a battery or ear pads at centralsound.co.